This video will show you how to use TestNG to run your Selenium test in parallel. Welcome to Automate Now, I'm Marco Cruz. Let's dive in. This video will cover a lot of TestNG concepts that you may or may not be familiar with. In case you are new to TestNG, please check out the video card on the screen to learn more. Now let's go to the code. Since we're working with TestNG, you are expected to have the TestNG dependency in your POM file. This is my POM.xml file and I already have the TestNG dependency added here. Next, we need to create a file that is called TestNG.xml. Now there are a couple of ways that you can do this. One would be to add the file yourself. Another is to use the TestNG plugin that adds the file for you automatically. Let me show you how that works. We're going to click on this file menu here, select settings, then let's look for plugins. This right here. Then select the marketplace and let's go ahead and do a search. Right here in this box, we're going to say testng. This is the name of the plugin, create testng XML. Let's go ahead and click install. Our plugin is now installed. Let me go ahead and click OK. And now we're going to have a new option. We're going to right click the project folder right here. This is our project. We're going to right click it and you're going to have this option that says create testng XML. However, this is disabled right now. So let me go ahead and reload the project from disk and right click it again. Now I have the option available. So I'm going to click this option, create testng XML. Then we're going to click OK. And you should see a new file appear right here, testng.xml. If you don't see this file, click on file and select reload all from disk. Let me go ahead and open this file. And I'm going to reformat this code. So click code and select reformat code. This plugin went ahead and created the testng file for us and it also added some default items on here. Let's take a look at this file. The first two lines right here are standard. You're going to see this on all testng.xml files. Next we have this tag that says suite. This refers to a suite of tests and you can give it whatever name you want. In this case it just says all test suite. Then we have another tag that says test. Inside of this test tag you're going to find all the tests that belong to the test suite. In this case, we have classes that contain tests inside of them. By the way, these classes were taken from this folder right here. So if you have any test classes, they might appear here automatically. Let me simplify this. I'm going to remove all of this and I'm just going to leave test there. I'm going to delete these two things right here. I don't really need these. For the name, I'm going to change this. I'm going to say my parallel test. Now let's find some tests that we want to run in parallel. I'm going to open this package that says tests. Inside here I have my test classes. I'm going to open this one that says save screenshot to file. In here we have one test. And let's find another class, this one here that says windows and tabs. This one has two tests. Let's suppose that we want to run these two tests in this class plus this test right here and this other class all in parallel. So let's go ahead and start building this testing file. I'm going to click on this suite tag right here and go inside and say parallel. There are different things we can run in parallel. For example, we can run tests, classes, or methods. In my case, I'm going to select methods. This is because we have some test methods inside of these classes over here that we want to run in parallel. That's why we're saying that we want to run methods in parallel. I'm also going to rename this. I'm just going to call this automate now suite. Next, we're going to go inside of this test tag and we're going to type classes and then we say class. The name of our class is going to be, first is this one right here. Notice that this class is inside of this package right here, io.automatenow.test. So let me go ahead and say io.automatenow.test and then the name of the class, this class right here. I'm going to duplicate this line and select this other class over here, windows and tabs. So let me delete this and say windows and tabs. Now we have the two classes that we want to work with. You'll notice that we have a total of three tests. We have two tests inside of this class that says windows and tabs. And we have another test over here in this other class that makes three tests. You will notice that this testng.xml file doesn't say anything about how many threads we want to use. This is because testng automatically gives you five threads to work with. And you don't have to specify this anywhere in your file. But let's say that you have a lot of tests and you want to run with a lot more threads. 
So we could go up here, we could type thread count, and then you could type in 10, for example. And this will allow you to run 10 threads. Now notice what happens if I put five right here. You're going to notice that this is grayed out. This may not be very noticeable in your screen, but this text right here is in gray, while this one is in green. If I hover my mouse over this, it says redundant default attribute value assignment. That is because we're assigning the default value. So we don't need this right here. Let me go ahead and close this right here. And I'm going to go to this class that says base test. Notice that right here, we have a couple of test and G annotations. This one says before suite. So this is a test that is going to run before the entire suite of tests runs. This is only going to run once. Then we have another one here that says after suite. This will run at the end of the suite and will also run only once. When I say suites, I'm referring to this right here. So this is my test suite. Whatever's inside of here, that is my test suite. So that before suite is going to run before any of these tests. And the after suite is going to run after all of the tests are executed. But I need to make one change to this. Instead of saying before suite, I need to change this to before method. I'm going to say method right here. And this comes from test and G annotations. The same thing for this, I'm going to say after method. And let me explain why I'm doing this. In the last video, I showed you how to use thread local, thread guard, and synchronize to properly set up your tests to be able to run them in parallel. When we make our Selenium test thread safe, it means that every thread is going to have its own copy of the web driver. And what we're doing here is providing each one of those threads with their own copy of this paste page objects. So each thread is going to have their own navigation bar, their own home page, and their own sandbox page. Also, after each test finishes, we're going to close the browser and end the session. So the bottom line is, is to make sure that the web driver is thread safe. And to learn how to do that, be sure to check out that video if you haven't already. And now we're ready to run this test in parallel. Let me go over here to the testng.xml and I can right click this file and say run testng.xml. When my test runs, I can see three windows open. Right here, I have three windows. And they're all executing at the same time. You see one test is done here, another test is done, and this one is still running. And notice over here, we can see all of the tests executed simultaneously. If you look carefully over here in the console log, you're going to see each thread executing. Here's the first thread, here's the third thread, and the second one. Thanks so much for sticking around. In the next video, I'm going to show you how we can add screenshots to a Word document while we're running our test in parallel. But meanwhile, you can check out the video on the screen to learn how to add screenshots to a Word document while you're running your test sequentially. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.